We're going to do positioning for the upper GI for the stomach. And this is following the fluoroscopy images that the radiologist does for the upper GI. Now, let me backtrack just one moment. Usually for an upper GI, there is a scalp film involved, so you would just simply take a KUB, and some radiologists like a high KUB, so you can see all the way up to the diaphragm, since the stomach is right below the diaphragm. But again, you'll go with the protocol of the facility. Now, once the patient has drank their barium, the radiologist has taken his image under the fluoroscopy unit. Uh, if he does want some overhead images, uh, there are several images that he may or she may ask for. So on our AP image or projection for the stomach, now you can either use a 14 by 17 image receptor or you can use the 11 by 14 image receptor. I've got the 14 by 17 in here, and you can palpate the very bottom of the rib cage, and then your transverse line is going to cut right across an inch to two inches above that. Okay. Our longitudinal line, if you're using the larger image receptor, you can leave it mid-sagittal. But if you're using a smaller image receptor, you can off-center to the left between the xiphoid and the lateral edge of the body. So in this case, with the large image receptor, we're not only getting the stomach, but we're also getting a portion of the small bowel. So we're just seeing more territory in the abdomen when we use the larger image receptor. So this is our AP image, and you would take this on expiration, so you have the patient take in a breath, and then blow your breath out and hold it out, and then you would take your exposure at that time. Okay, now I'm going to have David roll over to his stomach. We're going to do a PA projection. Okay, since he is PA, this is now the left side, so we need to mark the image receptor correctly. So if I put the left marker here, this will indicate this is the left side of his body. Now make sure your patient is straight on the table, so I'm going to scoot his shoulders over. Okay, and then check for the mid-sagittal. Palpate the bottom edge of his ribs, and then you're going to center your transverse line an inch to two inches above that bottom edge of the ribs. Now, if you're using a smaller image receptor, if you're using the 11 by 14, you want to be sure and, and off-center this to the left. So, I'm going to move it to the left, and you always want to check and make sure that uh, you are going left and not right. So this is his left side. There's his mid-sagittal. That's the edge of his body. We're going to go halfway. Once again, if you're using the smaller image receptor, the 11 by 14, go ahead and turn your film in crosswise, and that, that gets the stomach uh, as it stretches across crosswise, because on the AP and the PA, the stomach does uh, go across. I'm going to turn it off. Oh, okay. His shielding is slipping, so I'm just going to reset that. Alright, now we're going to do the RAO for the stomach. Okay, now your patient is going to be turned up onto that right side, and you have a degree uh, 40 to 70 degrees, so you have a pretty good range to go with. So again, check your patient and make sure that the hip and the shoulder area is at the same plane. So I'm going to bring his shoulder up just a little bit more. Bring it on. There you go. Okay, so 
positioning for the stomach again feel that border of the rib the bottom border you're going to come up an inch to two inches palpate the actual spine and the edge of the lateral edge of the body and you're going to go halfway okay so those are two landmarks you have to watch out for bottom edge of ribs come an inch to two inches up palpate the spine and this lateral border going to go halfway. Okay, so this will be your RAO. Just remember, this is the left side of the body. This will be the right side of the body that's down, so be sure that you do mark the correct side of the body. Uh, if you are using a smaller image receptor, if you're using the 11 by 14, it will look more along that size light field. Have your film in lengthwise because this will get the length of the stomach better because when they're in this position it tends to elongate and the RAO, this is the image where you're going to see the duodenal bulb uh, fill with barium best. RAO, right lateral, you just see the barium empty out real well and you're going to see the bulb full of barium as it's starting to traverse into the small intestine. Okay, now for the right lateral of the stomach. Have the patient on their side. You're going to palpate the bottom border of the ribs. Your transverse line will be an inch to two inches above that. Okay, find the mid-coronal. Okay, scoot towards me just a little bit. Okay. I'm mid-coronal at this point. Now what you want to be is in between that mid-coronal and the very anterior edge of the body. Okay, so you go halfway in between that. And then this will be your centering for your right lateral of the stomach. Remember, all of these images you're going to do on expiration. Okay, and then for the LPO, roll to your left side. Okay, I'm going to palpate the bottom border of the ribs. Transverse line is going to be an inch to two inches above that. And then I'm going to palpate where his xiphoid process is in that opposite border of the body. And you can go halfway in between that to get the stomach. Now, what you have to be careful about, if you are using the automatic exposure control, sometimes it does cut off too early when you're centering on this. So sometimes with the AEC, I like to come posterior and center more at the area midline with the xiphoid just so you don't get that early cutoff. If you're using a manual technique, then that previous position will work just fine. When the patient's in the LPO position, instead of barium being in the duodenal bulb, you're going to be seeing it air filled. So you're seeing a nice air contrast effect of the bulb and the mucosal lining of that. So that's the difference between the LPO and the RAO is the distribution of the barium in the stomach.